Hey guys, what's up? It's Daniel here and welcome back to another episode of Our Turn Now and another episode of our Fruits of the Spirit series. Today I'm going to be talking about patience. So get your notes, get your Bibles ready, and let's get right into today's video. Ways to define patience, but I like to define patience in two ways. So let's start with number one. Patience is confidently waiting in the Lord, surrendering control of your life to Him and allowing Him to work on your behalf. And throughout the Bible, there are many examples showing this definition of patience. So let's take a look at it. First, in Psalm 37, 7, it tells us this. It says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. Secondly, in Romans 12, 12, it tells us to rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. Thirdly, in Romans 8.25, it tells us, But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. And our last verse is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. And it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. So the first point I want to make is that patience requires faith. And faith is trusting in what is unseen. And in this case, we are trusting in God when we're being patient. Secondly, be confident in the waiting. Waiting is really, really tough. But despite that, you should know that God is working for your good so that you can fulfill His design purpose in your life. Thirdly, and I think it's one of the most important things that you must do, you must seek God first. Because when you seek God, He will give you all that you need and you will never run empty and you will never need anything else as long as you have God. Lastly, being patient requires you to communicate to God. Throughout your life, you should be praying to Him. And we all know our lives are not going to be easy. However, when we pray to God, He will hear your requests and He will hear your cries and He will never leave any of your prayers unanswered. So pray to God and just tell Him everything that you need and just talk to Him. So who is someone in the Bible who exhibited patience? Well, in Genesis, it tells us about Abraham. And in Genesis, God told Abraham that he would be a father to many nations. And even though he never got to see it come true in his life, he was confident in God. He was faithful towards God and he never turned his back on him no matter what. And this takes us to my second definition of patience. Patience is loving others even when you don't agree or when you don't see eye to eye with each other. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, it tells us that love is patient. Also in the Bible, in James chapter 1, verse 19, it tells us that you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. You cannot be patient with someone unless you learn how to love them first. And one practical thing I like to apply in my own life is listening with purpose. Instead of trying to think of a comeback to what someone is saying, I try to listen. And by listening with purpose, you try to gain a real understanding of what the other person is thinking so that although you may not see eye to eye, although you may not agree completely with another person, at least you can understand where they are coming from. And lastly, you should learn how to agree to disagree. What that means is that although you may have differences with that person, you guys choose to respect each other's differences. And chances are you disagree with at least one thing with every single person in this world or every single person that you may know. And when we disagree with someone, we tend to try and convince them to agree with our opinion, to change their thinking. However, that doesn't work all the time. And things can get very, very heated when you're really trying to convince them that you are right. And what that can lead to 
is an argument. And most arguments are pointless and can be easily avoided. And this is very applicable to our families when we're talking to our siblings or when we're talking to our parents. A lot of these arguments can be easily avoided. And by learning to agree to disagree, you can avoid these arguments and you can live in harmony with everyone that you live with and with everyone that you know. So that is it for today's video of our turn now. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a like. My name is Daniel and I'll see you guys again in another video. But for now, peace out.